In video games, a confrontation against a final boss or a main villain often concludes the progression of the story of the game. But what we sometimes see in video games is a boss surrounded by a squad of underlings, all of whom are loyal to the main boss, if at least to some degree. It's a recurring game design decision, and if you think about it, it's quite convenient. When you have a squad of underlings around one villain, you can easily and naturally introduce more boss fights into the game, with the added benefit of uniting and introducing all of the characters with at least one common thread in their backstories through having a connection to the main villain of the game. It's also interesting to see if a protagonist's resistance can start fraying such an enemy's convictions and lead them to assisting the protagonist or their group, as has been seen in games before. The Cobra unit from Metal Gear Solid 3 is a perfect example of this type of game design trope, led by a character who is meant to evoke complex emotional reactions in the audience in the boss. The Metal Gear Solid series of games have employed such an idea often, starting with the first Metal Gear Solid game's Foxhound bosses. First off, some basic backstory. The Cobra unit is a team of super soldiers who are heavily responsible with influencing the direction of the Second World War towards victory for the Allied forces. It could also be said that Cobra unit are aptly named because they oppose the protagonist, Naked Snake. The Cobra unit are sometimes referred to separately from their leader, the boss, who serves as the final boss of the game, though she is not the only antagonist to the story. Continuing this train of thought, some of the members of the Cobra unit are imbued with superhuman ability due to a parasitic infection, while the boss herself is simply a super capable soldier. Each of the members of the Cobra unit have a microbomb that activates upon death which is attached to them through this with conflicting explanations. All members of the Cobra unit, including the boss herself, are at times described as longing for death. But the microbombs also serve a political purpose in that once dead, the corpse isn't supposed to be retrieved by an enemy for whatever purposes they so desire. Each of the members of the Cobra unit are also named after an emotion experienced in war. Fear, pain, fury, end, and sorrow, with end being more ambiguous but meant to describe the feeling of death in battle. Interestingly enough, the boss, whose nickname isn't associated with an emotion, also has an alternate nickname in The Joy. The atypical nature of her nickname, as it relates to the emotions you would expect to experience in battle, highlights that she is the leader of the group. For the purposes of this video, we'll describe each member of the Cobra unit as they are encountered in the game. The Pain uses his ability to control hornets in battle, with the aid of a queen bee in his backpack that emits sounds from her wings to direct them. The parasite he possesses makes him secrete pheromones that allow him to control insects in general beyond just hornets. He has hornet stings all over his body, a distinction readily apparent in his face. In battle, he often has a shield of hornets that protect him from attacks. His hornets can also be controlled to function as bullets, both from a makeshift gun formed by the hornets and fired out of the pain's mouth. The hornets can also lob grenades at Naked Snake and serve to track his location if he remains out of the pain's sight. In battle, the pain can also use the hornets to teleport and create copies of himself. The Fear is a character who, like his name, was highly fascinated with studying the emotion of fear and induced it in others. Amongst the other members of the unit, he is particularly agile and is also double-jointed and wears a special stealth camouflage suit. But the suit comes with a trade-off. It drains him of his stamina quickly and so he frequently needs to eat. The Fear is associated both with spiders and lizards for various physical abilities of his, including his jumping ability, the ability to run on water, and a long tongue that could be used to grasp objects. Offensively, in battle, he uses his two crossbows against you, sometimes attaching grenades to the fired arrows, and shoots at you from a distance as he leaps between the trees. He primarily fights from a distance. It's his combination of agility and camouflage that induces the feeling of fear into his opponents. The End is the oldest member of the group and medically has died many times already while still being alive, and his last death at Naked Snake's hands takes place for him at well over 100 years of age. His numerous experiences of death intersect with his name, which is meant to express the feeling of death in battle. He's a sniper above all snipers for his time, credited with creation of basic sniping techniques. The end possesses a parasite that allows his body to photosynthesize, and it's this ability that allows him to heal and revive, so to speak, while also increasing his lifespan. He snipes at you using tranquilizer darts which is part of his pacifistic character during the time of Metal Gear Solid 3. Among other bosses, he's unique in that he can be killed in ways outside of the conventional scheduled boss fights, including killing him before the scheduled boss fight and bypassing the fight altogether by manipulating the progression of time in-game, so to speak. The Fury is quite clearly associated with the emotion of rage, and it's easily expressed in the flamethrower that he employs against Naked Snake. The Fury's body is not a host to any parasite. What defines the Fury is that he's a cosmonaut, who, after he fought with the rest of the Cobra unit in the Second World War, took part in a mission into space that went wrong. 
During re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere, the spacecraft which he traveled in was covered in flames due to the spacecraft's malfunction. This episode was traumatic, and he very likely suffers from a form of post-traumatic stress disorder as a result. He still wears his cosmonaut suit in battle and uses a flamethrower powered by rocket fuel. Suffice it to say, it's a bit stronger than most flamethrowers. In-game, the Fury's sense of hearing is also noticeably good, allowing him to detect Naked Snake's movements. While bombastic in battle, he also has a subdued side that could reflect the lingering effects of his PTSD. The Sorrow is the last of the Cobra Unit members fought in the game. He is a medium, and unlike the other bosses in the game, he's actually completely dead before you fight him. It turns out that the Sorrow and the boss had a child together, a character that you probably more readily know as Revolver Ocelot, and who also appears in this game too. After one of the boss's missions post-Second World War went wrong, the Sorrow allowed himself to be killed by the boss after their child was threatened, with Ocelot's safety only ensured if one of the parents dies. His boss fight is unique in that he summons ghosts of enemies slain in the game against you. Your goal is to survive the boss fight or boss journey in such a way that you cheat death by using the revival pill. He somehow exists even after death, serving as a guide to the afterlife. Lastly, we're gonna address the boss. The boss serves as the final boss of the game and has served as a mother and mentor figure to Naked Snake throughout his life. The basic idea of the character is that she's worked to achieve world unity, but complications between other organized powers on the path have prevented her from achieving that goal. Such is her influence that it extends greatly to Naked Snake, who later becomes the villain Big Boss, the founder of Outer Heaven. She's highly combat capable and her soul is battle hardened and weary. The boss is credited with developing CQC while training Naked Snake and also originating the concept of a stealth mission within the Metal Gear universe. The complete truth of her motivations and her role in the events leading up to your fight against her are only revealed in the game's epilogue, and it's a truth which sticks with Naked Snake in a big way after the game. And that concludes our video on the Cobra unit. A wide cast of characters defined by a conflicting relationship to the concept of war. On one hand, a storied legacy as capable fighters and war heroes, but on the other hand, surviving the great stress and trauma of life after the fact, with the boss likely suffering the worst before we see her in this game. The Cobra unit are excellent because Metal Gear Games routinely philosophize on the complexity of the human experience of war and how major emotional events lead characters to take different actions or stick to life paths with a fanatic resolve, despite lots of people easily relating to the tragedy of the experience of war itself once having fought it. These bosses expertly communicate that complexity and tension. Tell us more about what you think about the Cobra unit, Metal Gear Solid 3, and the Metal Gear Games in general. Did you like the boss fights? How many times have you listened to Snake Eater? As always, thanks for watching. And that wraps it up. If you like what we're doing, please consider subscribing to our channel. We upload new videos daily. Also, don't forget to switch on the bell notification icon, that way you don't miss out on any of our videos.